Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. I've had this idea for quite a while, and I'm not sure if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but just, just as a general statement, I prefer larger projects more than smaller projects, and I prefer the process of working out all of the processes involved, as well as the efficiency in mass producing an item more than just producing one. So I wanna combine those two interests of mine and make a small production run of traditional woodworking workbenches, very similar to the one that I'm standing next to right now. I don't know if that means two, three, four, five workbenches, 5, 10, 15, 20, I don't know the, the number. I guess it just depends on uh, the, the amount of interest I can gain with these videos. But I wanna, I wanna do that. I wanna manufacture uh, a small run of workbenches, primarily on the CNC machine, which is kind of like an oxymoron. You're using something, or I'm gonna be using something that's highly digital, the CNC machine, to create a product to be used that is highly analog right? <laughs> hand tool workbench. Of course, so you can use any type of tools. It doesn't have to be hand tools. Um, but I think the process is going to be very, very interesting. There's a couple more details that I want to work out before I actually start on the workbench. Specifically, one type of joint, a dovetailed half lap joint. I want to get that process down pat before I start in on those workbenches. And that's because that's going to be the joint from the rails to the legs. This workbench that I'm standing next to right now was built in 2016. So I built it seven years ago. And I did want to go through the process of making a mortise and tenon joint from the legs to the bottom of the top. I wanted to be able to do that and learn that process and complete it. And uh, I'm very happy with the way that all that turned out. And it turned out great. I did not want to do that eight more times for the uh, legs to, uh, from the rails to the leg connections. So I, I, I used a different joint that is probably equally as strong, if not equally strong, plenty strong enough for this application. And that is just a massive half lap joint. Half lap joints are the very first real woodworking joint that I started using after glue and brad nails and butt joints and then pocket holes, right? So if you want to, if you're just starting into woodworking and you want to learn a little bit more, a half lap joint is something to experiment with. It is angled half lap joints, proud half lap joints. They're very, very strong joints that are pretty darn easy to create. So what I have here is just a bunch of two by fours that I've already slightly processed. I've cut, cross cut them to their final length at the miter saw and then ripped them to three inches in width at the table saw. One cut at three and a quarter of an inch and one cut at three inches to basically remove all of the rounded edges. I did not joint and plane any of the, the wide faces. As you can see, as these piles are rocking here, every one of these boards has a little bit of cut bow or twist. They're not perfect, but I think I can clamp them down to the CNC machine tight enough to complete this experiment. The whole point of today is to experiment with that particular joint, but I do want to leave today or tomorrow, whenever I get this done, with a completed project. So I'm going to make use of this experimenting time to make three split wood firewood racks for my back patio. I'm testing two different bits. First, I'll start with a half inch upcut bit and then move over to a half inch compression if the cut quality isn't that great. Quite a few takeaways from how this performs. First off, pine is just not a good wood to, to use with router bits. Uh, edge, edge profiling, not, not too bad. You're not gonna get as much tear out, but the instant you start going cross grain on pine with a router bit, whoo, tear out city. So this is a conventional upcut bit, uh, conventional direction, upcut, and wow, look at this tear out. Tear out city, right? Some nasty tear out, some fuzzies everywhere. I'm not too concerned about it because all this, all these fuzzies will sand off really easily and quickly. And that's going to be on the inside of the joint because this is the side that you're going to see. Uh, this side profile cut, everything was just, just nice and perfect. So, um, not the end of the world, but conventional upcut wasn't the answer. So what about climb cutting, changing the direction of travel and still having an upcut bit? Ah, a little bit better, still have a lot of fuzzies, but we don't have this nasty blowout here because What's going on here is the bit is is 
somewhere over here and traveling in this direction and as it comes through here of course it's just going to blow that out in this case we're starting here and then coming this direction and i think my vector was just too close to this edge i probably should have gone off a little bit this way more so that we had a nice clean cut rather than pushing in and cutting as it turns because it's not uh, not as nowhere near as bad but still some tear out this project it doesn't matter on tear out so no big deal there uh, the best results no surprise, came from a conventional cut rather than climb cutting and a compression bit. So drastically reduced tear out, still have some tear out. So pine is just not the answer if you're wanting something to be super, super nice and precise with no tear out. The mortises were cut with the same file and also with the exact same bit configuration. The, for, for a mortise cut like this, you kind of want to use an upcut bit for chip ejection. But at the same time, I didn't really want to deal with a bunch of tear out around the perimeter, so I went with the compression. And my thinking here was the mortise is going to be large enough that that way the compression isn't going to matter as far as packing material into the mortise. As much as, it's not going to cause a problem, so I was okay with using that. But really, an upcut bit should be used for mortises. Again, the cut quality is kind of a, you know, it's dependent upon the material because this one over here, nice and clean all the way around. This one, lots of fuzzies and a little bit of tear out on the inside so um pine just sucks on the cnc machine or with routers in general i assembled one of the side assemblies uh, without glue just put the joints together and this is crazy rigid without any without any uh glue at all that speaks to two things first you know these are two by fours there's a little bit of cup bow and twist in all of them and you flatten them out on the machine cut the joints and then they spring back to whatever shape that they had and you put these all together and then then you have a little bit of extra conflicting movement um for something like fine furniture or whatever you're building for the inside of the house of course you take the time to uh joint and plane everything nice and flat before you do it but this is just some outdoor um storage solution that i'm not too worried about so uh, that's that's kind of holding everything together, but also the, the dovetail joint itself. There's a reason why dovetail joints have been like, you know, the, the standard of quality joinery for forever. Uh, and that's because when the glue fails, you still have like a mechanical lock. The pieces are held together, especially if you orient the joint in such a way that gravity is just going to further seat the dovetail, which is not the way I did it here, but you get the point. So there's one thing that I would do differently, the one, one little learning point, and, and that is the directionality of this notch. So the bottom one, well actually they're symmetrical, right? The top one is proper, the notch is on the bottom. And then I just mirrored it to the bottom one, which means the notch goes on top. I should not have done that, I should have just moved it down, or after I mirrored it, flipped it vertically. And the reason being is now this little notch right here on both sides, is a moisture catch. As water hits this, it's gonna drip down on this edge, it's gonna hit this ledge and go down into this corner. And that's going to be probably the weakest link of this entire project. I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think this is overbuilt for what it is. And it's just nothing more than a, a learning lesson. This should be on bottom. I'm going to take the time to sand all of these uh, joints, just get all the fuzzies off of them and then assemble all of this with glue off camera. So then, while the glue sets, we can turn our attention to the tenons uh, for the bottom of these pieces. Every time I use this machine, I'm, I'm constantly gathering information. This is the first time that I've maxed out the vertical capacity. And in this case, I can get a 43 and a half inch long board clamped to the vertical table and cut a tenon on the other side. And that tenon is, in this case, 1.6 inches in length. I can get a longer piece if I switch out to a smaller diameter bit, like a quarter inch diameter bit with like a one inch length of cut instead of the one I'm using now. But that's just a you know, topic for another day. It's, it's good to get that little bit of information and just keep it in the back of my head. All these cuts turned out great. And there was a couple things to learn and tweak along the way, like a scoring cut, yes or no on a scoring cut. All, all of these were cut with an up cut bit. And if I bring this one right here and let the camera focus, you see this, just this little itty bitty fuzz right there. Like this is being so nitpicky. That's the only bit of tear out that I had without, oh, there's another little fuzz, without a scoring cut. When you cut in the vertical orientation like this and you use an up cut bit, your cuts are pretty much always flawless. So how much difference does no scoring cut make versus a scoring cut? Well, not much of a difference, but it does make them 
pretty much flawless. So this is the scoring cut. It's nice and crisp. One thing that you may or may not pick up on is this flat right here at the top of the uh, keyhole. That's not supposed to be flat. <laughs> I was experimenting with the scoring cut and this scoring cut was actually just a little bit too deep. Uh, that one was a full one eighth of an inch and I had to back it off quite a bit in order to, uh, to not interfere with this. But that's just, that's just a setup error as far as that goes. Uh, these joints, or these, these tenons turned out great. Speaking of great, Look at this grain orientation here on this 2x4. You don't see that often. This board was actually clear of any defects whatsoever. So I uh, kind of wanted to not cut this up. Uh, one thing that I did make sure of before cutting anything was to source all of these pieces or, or set all these pieces aside for this particular application. So I wanted to make sure that in the flat orientation like this, all of these boards were flat sawn. So that way when I use them in their final orientation, they will be quarter sawn and therefore resist sagging the most. These will be strongest with, with the force applied in this direction. Versus if I was to have the boards quarter sawn in this direction and then flip them like this, and now, now it's you know flat sawn this way, you'd be more likely to sag. Would it make much of a difference on this project? Probably not, just due to the way it's going to be used. But then again, it is worth taking the extra 10 seconds to pick out the correct boards. So these fit already great. I've already tested them out. So I'm going to go ahead and glue everything together. And then I can do some final preparations for a outdoor milk paint. For a finish, I'm going with the same stuff that the rest of our outdoor kitchen area is finished with, and that is a Tuscan red milk paint from General Finishes. And I had a little helper here with me. My daughter wanted to paint with me, and I, I, I said, absolutely, let's go paint. Let's have some a lot of fun. And she got uh, just a little bit done with all kinds of crazy drips and runs, and which is totally fine, and then realized that the camera was recording. So she wanted to dance, and as soon as she starts dancing, it's over. That's it. She's the dancer. <laughs> the next day I came out here, pulled all the firewood away, swept the floor really good, put these in place and filled them up and just stood back and smiled. This is something that I, was just a basic utilitarian project, but I think it looks fantastic. The colors of the, the color of this paint, this Tuscan red, really, really goes well with the, the color of, of these wood splits. You've got this kind of earthy tones, uh, this warming and inviting, it, they're, pun intended, <laughs> warming, it's firewood, right? Warming um, uh, color tones, and it looks really, really good. It's also interesting when you get close and look at the side, you see the exposed joinery. All of the joints are 0.1 inch proud of the adjacent faces, so it kind of gives a, a little bit more depth to it. And it, it's basic as far as the design go, but when you get close, it kind of makes you pause and think about what's going on a little bit more than say, you know, just, just a butt joint with pocket hole screws to connect all of the horizontal and vertical connections. So I really, really, really like the way that this looks. And more importantly than that, I'm glad to get the firewood off the floor where it can no longer collect a bunch of leaves and all kinds of debris. And it's just much easier to clean up like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything that I publish, go to my website, jayscustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything. If you're interested in some good quality router bits and want to save a little bit of money, use my promo code. There's a link down in the description below. You guys take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.